What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Now, with the Crown Tundra coming out recently, we have seen a shift in the VGC rule set. Pokemon that were banned from Series 6 have now been unbanned. Uh, a lot of people weren't aware about that, by the way. A lot of people were like, wait, isn't Indeedee banned? No, no, no. They, they only banned him for Series 6, and not even because they were broken, but just because Series 6 was like a for-fun what-if format. Uh, but with Series 7 rolling around, uh, we have a new format with a lot of new Pokemon coming in and sort of just dominating. A lot of really cool Pokemon as well that I'm a big fan of, like Regieleki, Glacier, uh, the new Galarian, Moltres, Kartana. The, they're all cool Pokemon, in my opinion. Dragapult still has uh, some niche uses and Dusclops is still as useful as ever. However, there is a tournament that just uh, finished up this weekend called the uh, Victory Road Tundra Challenge and there were a lot of people competing it, 298 players in fact, so I'm going to be going over the top teams from that tournament and just giving my thoughts on them and the format and the first results from a tournament pretty much. Like These are important things, these are the first tournament results from this new format, so it gives us a nice uh, look into the future. So if you guys enjoy this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. So I guess we'll start from the bottom and just... We'll sort of skim through the first couple of teams until we get to top 10, and then we'll go over um, everything, including the winner, my good friend Joseph Ugarte, who is the number one ranked player uh, this year. So yeah, cool cool guy. We were actually supposed to have a, a best of three the other day, and I had to cancel because something came up. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So something I'm noticing already is there's heavy Kartana usage as well as um, he heavy Regieleki usage. Uh, it seems that Electro types are very important in the format, but what I want to point out first is look at this. There is a Mesprit in top 26, which is really cool. So the team that, this looks really interesting actually. So it's uh, Rillaboom, Blacephalon, I think it's Urshifu Dark most likely, probably Defiant, Thunderous, uh, Mesprit, and Colossal. I'm really interested in what the what the Mesprit was meant to do, so I might hit up Charles at some point if I can find his at. Um, but this is actually a common way of using Colossal in the current format. It's not so much Weevil Colossal that people are running right now, or even Sneasel Colossal, because we now have a Pokemon that is able to damage everything on the field with a very powerful move and be immune to Fake Out, as well as Redirection. So people have started using Blacephalon plus Colossal because it's a very reliable way of getting the move off, especially since you can Choice Lock into such a powerful move. Mind Blown, if you don't know, is Blacephalon's Fire-type signature move, which uh, hits everything on the field and sacrifices 50% of Blacephalon's health. So if you Choice Lock into it, you're very fast because he has pretty high base speed. I think like base 109? Let me let me double check. Let me double check. Because I, like, I feel like I'm dumb and I'm just completely forgetting it here. 107, yeah. So base 107 speed, pretty fast, especially when you choice lock into it. It can't be redirected because it hits everything, including your Colossal, and Steam Engine, if you don't know, activates not only with water moves, but also fire moves. So it'll be able to give your Colossal a really high speed boost. You'll be able to go for your max, um, your max rock move to set up that condition on the other side of the field and get a lot of damage off in the first turn, really. The only downside to it is that you don't get your weakness policy boost, which is the main appeal of Surf plus Colossal, but I suppose this is a more reliable way of running it uh, that's actually just really fun. So I, I like this team. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really interested in what that Mesprit did, but yeah. We see a pretty standard looking team. Um, pretty much just good stuffs, Metagross, probably Self Sucker Punch with weakness policy, I think. Um, Clefairy for support. Uh, good stuffs again, Dragapult, Incineroar, Finny with Aleki, and Trick Room Mode with Glacier. Um, we see screens. I think I'm pretty sure a lot of people are running screens plus Moltres right now. Uh, I actually have a screens Moltres team coming out soon that I worked on with uh, my good friend Ninth Gym. But uh, Raichu Moltres is pretty cool. Raichu is very fast, gets access to screens. Lightning Rod does support the Moltres itself. Weakness policy Moltres is very good, especially with Berserk going off if it goes below 50% HP. On top of that, Ferrothorn seems like a very a very nice pick in the format. Uh, when you look at everything else that we're seeing, yes, there are a good amount of fighting and fire types, but they're not difficult to remove now that we have Tapu Fini. So Fini plus Ferrothorn seems like a good meta call at the moment, uh, or even just Fini Kartana. I know a lot of people are running that, so that's that seems pretty standard. Uh, we see... <laughs> I'm going to say that this is uh, the revival of Beat Up plus Terrakion, if it, if it ever even died. Uh, a team very reminiscent of Series 5, in fact, one that would have been legal in Series 5, still succeeding in Series 6, that's always good to see. Uh, we see Kartana, more good stuffs, 
Like I said, Finny Cartana is always very good in Cinero Nihiligo. I'm actually curious as to how good Nihiligo will be in the next format. Uh, it is a potential Trick Room setter, but also a fast offensive Pokemon that now has access to Max Ooze, which is very scary. So, could be a good Pokemon. Uh, we see more good stuffs with, uh, actually, Primarina. I think that's the first Primarina we've seen so far. Uh, but Primarina, very good Pokemon. I could see maybe they might be running like an endgame of Parish Song on the Primarina, considering they have a Cresselia, which is very fat next to it. Uh, but I could also see just straight offense Life Orb. Uh, sort of a hard Trick Room team. It does have a fast option with Finny and Nihiligo, if you can really call Finny a fast option, but uh, looks like hard Trick Room on the surface of things because you could just lead off with Ndidi Bronzong and then go Trick Room mode with the um, either the Primarina, or not Primarina, either the Finny and the Glacier or even just Ferrothorn uh, Glacier. However, I, I would assume that Ferrothorn doesn't come into matchups where you're facing off against a team with a strong fire type considering the team does look like it has a pretty, fire, a pretty big fire type weakness. They do have two resists here, but uh, overall, if you, if you can remove them, then it is pretty weak to that. But I, what am I to say? This guy got 19th. That's pretty good. Uh, we see more good stuffs plus Aleki. Aleki is honestly really surprising how good it is, but I suppose a Pokemon with base 200 speed would always come out on top uh, when it comes to screen support. And that's mostly what people are running at the moment, which is really cool. In fact, we're going to see a lot of Aleki uh, up further on the list, so that, that's always fun. Uh, next up, we see Blaziken, actually. Blaziken Bisharp, which is a, a uh, that's an archetype you actually used to see a lot in 2018, and occasionally in 2019, I think, you would see it on, like, very weird teams. It wasn't common at all in 2019, but it was very fun to see. Some people tried recreating it with um, Cinderace Bisharp when it got Libero, but Blaziken Bisharp seems a lot more reliable, and the reason it's so good is because Blaziken is able to speed boost and also threaten things with fighting and fire stab moves, which... Bisharp just complements it so well since it's able to hit things that Blaziken doesn't want to be hit by, like Psychic Pokemon, uh, with Sucker Punch or even, you know, like Throat Chop, other strong moves. And if you try to intimidate the Blaziken on the lead, you just end up giving the Bisharp a Defiant boost, which is even scarier in a Dynamax format. So that's always very cool. Uh, we see some Zapdos usage on these teams as well. Um, this team seems to be very similar, except instead of Blaziken Bisharp, they ended up going with uh, sort of a pseudo Trick Room mode. Mamoswine is actually seeing some usage in this tournament as well, which is always very cool since Mamoswine now has access to um, a buffed Oblivious. Oblivious used to just make it so you're immune to taunt, which um, which made it a very good stealth rocker in singles. However, in, in this format, it now makes it immune to Intimidate, which means that it's actually able to check landers very well with things like Unintimidated Ice Shard or just Max Hailstorm, which is always you know, a very big threat to the Landris on the other side of the field. On top of that, it's able to hit things like Heatran and other Pokemon like uh, Incineroar. It's actually a very good Incineroar check for that purpose. Uh, another team very similar to this, except uh, Screen's Aleki plus Moltres. That's also just... I, I like that Aleki Moltres is, <laughs> is a thing right now. It's just super cool in my opinion. More good stuffs plus Trick Room. Uh, Kartana Urshifu. Was it? Kartana Urshifu, Finny, Aleki with Trick Room in the back. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm liking the amount of Dusclops usage right now because I thought Dusclops would fall off as soon as we got Porygon 2, and Porygon 2 just hasn't been picking up in usage because Dusclops is just so reliable in the Dynamax format with being able to burn things, set up gravity, self-proc, weakness policy, uh, so that, that's always really nice for it. I'm assuming that this Dusclops next to Glacier that we're seeing in the format right now is probably to like self-brick break and set up your, your own weakness policy on these guys, so that's always, that's always fun. Uh, we see... Celesteela Guzzlord. Oh my god, Guzzlord in top 20. That's kind of cool. So, Guzzlord seeing usage. I can't imagine what it could be doing. Uh, if I look at the team, I didn't actually get to watch the tournament live, unfortunately. So, I'm, I'm just looking over the teams right now and giving my insight on what they probably are. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any actual VODs, though. So, we see Amoongus, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Guzzlord with Dusclops and Celesteela. Uh, I would say Guzzlord is more likely on the Trick Room matchup since Celesteela actually has a decent speed stat. Uh, Guzzlord is... Wow, that's so interesting. I suppose it actually is pretty well protected by the um, Amoongus since it can redirect any single target fairy moves. And maybe it was like Weakness Policy Guzzlord. Since under Trick Room Weakness Policy, Guzzlord can easily tank a hit with that Dynamax option. Uh, it's pretty slow. It's able to lower attack stats. Uh, with the Max Dragon. It has good coverage too. Max Flare, Max Steel Spike. It's, it's able to do a lot, actually. Guzzlord might be a solid Trick Room Pokemon in this format. Now that I'm thinking about it, that, that could be interesting to see. I really want to see where the Guzzlord takes us, and I, I will want to contact um, Alex here and figure out what that is. So 
I'll ask him about that. Uh, next up we have, we're almost in top 10, so I'll start getting more in depth here. We have Max Waterman uh, with sort of a good stuffs team. Tyranitar actually seeing usage. You don't see too much Tyranitar in the format right now, just because it, it isn't very friendly to it with Tapu Fini, uh, Amoongus, Kartana, and Metagross all checking it. Uh, however, I could see that Tyranitar could be pretty useful for maybe checking opposing um, Metagross. If you Dynamax to live the hit, you can probably go for a Max Darkness and maybe pick up a KO, or even under Tailwind would be very useful. Uh, maybe even like Bulldoze Tyranitar to self-proc the weakness policy. That could be interesting. We see Entei. Entei is a Pokemon that I actually expect to see a little bit more of in the tournament since it's sort of a new toy. It's cool. Now that it has its hidden ability, it has new, it has new toy syndrome uh, with its ability to not get intimidated uh, with inner focus. And it's also flinch immune, which is really cool. So it looks like we have screens Entei since there's a Grim Snarl here. Entei is very good for checking things like Incineroar with like Stomping Tantrum. It's a very good Metagross check as well. Uh, Sacred Fire is a 50% chance to burn, so you can completely negate the fact that you give it a weakness policy with that move. And on top of that, it's just a really heavy hitter. 115 base attack is a lot uh, when you're able to Choice Band into things or even Life Orb into things. Uh, it has access to Extreme Speed, which is really threatening now since it's uh, one of the most powerful priority moves in the game. In fact, the highest priority move in the game, which is really, really scary. The fact that it's no longer an event move means it's much easier to get onto this guy. So I like that we're seeing Entei here. That, that could be really interesting in the format. I'm planning on building an Entei team soon. Another Raichu plus Moltres team. It, it's a very solid archetype, I, I have to admit. I like Raichu Moltres. Um, it looks like Stack Attack in the back. Not, I mean, like, I don't know what their what their Trick Room mode would be. I think that it's more of a soft Trick Room mode here. They do have a Cresselia, which is a very reliable Pokemon to get Trick Room off, but it also is a very reliable Pokemon to spam things like Icy Wind with. Uh, I could see maybe uh, this team just bringing the Stack Attack at entirely because it seems very weak to Glacier if the opponent manages to get the Trick Room up. So a Stack Attack in the back would be a very nice answer to that if it's able to live a Max Quake. So I, I could see that being the case. And I mean, we're already in top 10. Andrew Ding. Very talented player. Uh, we see Rillaboom, Heatran, actually a very nice synergy there. Earthquake is picking up in usage since Stack Attack is such a good Trick Room setter, uh, and Landorus is such a good Earthquaker, so uh, being able to set up Grassy Terrain is a lot more valued, even though you know Stomping Tantrum and High Horsepower are more widely distributed in this generation, since the premier ground type is Landorus right now. That synergy is actually very, very useful for the Heatran in particular. Uh, we also see likely Urshifu Dark plus Defiant Thunderous. Uh, we see Hard Trick Room or <laughs> Soft Trick Room option in the back with uh, Dust Cops and Glacier. Overall, very solid team, uh, in my opinion. They they have a lot of Pokemon that just check each other's weaknesses, which is really good. I mean, like that's how you team build, of course. But this team in particular just looks so cool because Defiant Thunderous threatens you by sweeping you with Max Airstream if you try to intimidate the Rillaboom or the um, Urshifu on the lead. Rillaboom plus Heatran is great synergy. Rillaboom plus the Glacier offers recovery on a Pokemon that wants to run weakness policy, and it's just going to be a really tough time trying to kill that uh, Dusclops with so many Pokemon threatening the Dark type that you want to hit it with. So yeah, honestly, a very interesting team. And if you try to hit it with like a, a Dragapult, or you know, if you decide to run that awful Ghost Horse Pokemon, then the uh, the Urshifu will protect it from that. So that's that's really cool. I like this team a lot. This is a very interesting team. I have to hit them up. All right, so. Hippolyte Bernard running screens, Kartana. Kartana, likely Assault Vest on this team. Um, honestly, just a very solid team overall. Screens plus uh, life, not life orb, screens plus weakness policy on the Glacier could be interesting, uh, but it's likely just meant to be like screens Kartana as a very threatening lead uh, versus teams that, you know, carry Pokemon that check the Kartana. You can probably bring the, bring the Glacier in the back. Sorry, I'm fumbling on my words here. I'm very tired. Uh, the Glacier in the back mode, I think it covers a lot of the weaknesses that Kartana screens would have, and uh, Landris always a very reliable Pokemon, but if we notice something, if we notice something, in previous formats, and, you know, people have been commenting about this, like, hey, Landris is going to be on, like, every single team. Look at the usage. Most teams, I might be tripping here, I might be tripping here, but it looks like most teams actually forego the Landris. That's something I'm just noticing now that we're getting into like top 10. Most of the teams are foregoing Landorus, and even most of the teams in top 10 do not have a Landorus. So take that, naysayers. <laughs> All right, um, where, where were we? We were talking about the um, the screens Kartana team. There it is. Next up, we have Elliot's team with, once again, it looks like 
almost identical to this team down here by Andrew Ding, uh, except what do they go with? I'm losing my place. So Rillaboom Heatran, Rillaboom Heatran, Tapu Fini, Urshifu, or I guess the lead. I mean, Rillaboom Heatran itself seems pretty cool. So I, I was just looking at the lead and I thought it was identical. But Rillaboom Heatran, Tapu Fini, um, Waterfire Grass Core right there on top of that, Fairy Steel. Um, we see the Landorus and Galarian Moltres plus Togedemaru. Togedemaru, a very good partner for the Moltres once again. Uh, a lot of the same reasons that Raichu is a good partner. It's an Electric type with Lightning Rod, access to Fake Out, and uh, also Nuzzle with Speed Control. So that's that's very good. I like this team too, but I think I, I think I prefer Andrew's team just a little bit more. It just seems really threatening on the lead. We see a non a non colossal based um, Blacephalon team. And honestly, I think Blacephalon is going to be a really interesting niche pick this format because it not only enables the um, the Colossal, but it's also a threat in its own. With Tailwind, this thing's able to spam Heat Wave, Mind Blown, whatever move it really wants to go for, and just threaten sweeps with that. Because if you get a Heat Wave KO, like a double Heat Wave KO on two Pokemon that have taken chip damage, you're getting a sharp special attack boost, which is very scary in this format. Uh, ghost types that threaten Blacephalon seem to be checked by the Urshifu on this team. It also has the Soft Trick Room mode in the back. Um, and Zapdos overall seems to be picking up in usage as an electric type, mainly because it has a good matchup versus Finny. It's very bulky and it just got access to a lot of very important tools. So yeah, I, I like this team quite a bit. We see top five here with Koki, Kawanashi running Urshifu, Incineroar, Tep Finny, Regieleki, uh, Tornadus, and Metagross. Uh, mostly just a solid good stuffs team. Nothing we really haven't seen before, but overall a very solid team. This is interesting. Spectrier. We actually have a Spectrier in top five. So I've I've always been <laughs> a big naysayer about Spectrier. I think it's just a garbage Pokemon, but I think it's pretty clear what it does here. Uh, the Spectrier itself doesn't seem to be the threat that many people are concerned with as much as it is a very, very weak physical attacker meant to be fast and outspeed the Metagross, bulldozing it as it goes for a Dynamax, getting some good speed control and allowing the Metagross to sweep with weakness policy. So a very well constructed team. Uh, once again, just pretty much a good stuffs team with Spectre or Metagross sort of tagged onto the back. So yeah, I, I like that. I, I think that's one of the better ways to use Spectre. A lot of people commented that on like my little meme video about Spectre. So Spectre could be interesting in this format. It does have a pretty bad matchup versus Dragapult, which I'm going to say Dragapult's going to pick up in usage as a special attacker just because Max Phantasm is one of the better ways of knocking out um, Metagross. But something I've noticed, I'm surprised I haven't seen a single Cinderace here. I'll get into, I'll get into Pokemon that I am surprised I haven't seen yet but at the end, but let, let's let's continue. Uh, more good stuffs, Regieleki, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Urshifu, uh, Dusclops, Glacier, nothing we haven't seen before. And in second place, Marco Silva actually running G-Max Lapras, which I don't believe is anywhere else on this list. So G-Max Lapras plus Tailwind is actually very threatening. It hits a solid speed tier if you max out the speed. It's able to outspeed things like Dragapult. Uh, Kartana does very well with an Assault Vest behind screens, and it also covers a lot of the weaknesses that Lapras has. Um, Incineroar, great Pokemon for Parting Shot, Fake Out, allowing you to get a Tailwind off with your Tornadus. And we have most likely just a weakness policy Metagross. I don't see a way to self proc it on this team. Um, and the reason that I'm saying the weakness policy is on the Metagross that, uh, rather than the Lapras is because a lot of Tailwind Lapras teams opt to just run the Life Orb on that instead, since it's able to get immediate damage without making your opponent fall for the uh, the trick of just hitting the Lapras. Uh, and weakness policy on Metagross is much more reliable because it's such a difficult Pokemon to knock out, and it's such a threatening Pokemon even without the weakness policy once it's Dynamaxed that your opponent will want to hit it with a uh, super effective move, even though they know there's probably a weakness policy on it because they just want it gone. They need to get rid of that as soon as possible. So I am a big fan of this team. I think that Tailwind Lapras is a very solid archetype in the format and it can go very far. And as you can see, it did seven and two. And finally, in first place, we have Joe UX9, uh, Joseph Ugarte with Kartana, um, Kartana, Rotom Heat, Gastrodon, Landorus, Dragapult, and Tyranitar. So I think the only other Tyranitar on this list, I haven't spoken to Joe about this. I'm sure he's released a video about this team. So um, just my initial analysis, I'm going to go ahead and link Joe's channel in the description down below so you can ask him, I guess, or find out what he ran on his channel. Uh, but 
face value analysis of this team, I mean, obviously he has the water fire grass core right up front. Uh, I think that Rotom Heat is a very solid pick in this format just because Nasty Plot and the ability to hit things like Kartana and Metagross in particular, it looks like that was his like Metagross pick, um, it is really good because Metagross doesn't threaten Rotom Heat with anything short of Max Mindstorm since it's immune to uh, Earthquake and it resists the Steel Spike, so only one option really for hitting it. Uh, on top of that, you have a very threatening Dragapult in the front next to the Rotom, likely, to <laughs> sort of scare it out. So Nasty Plots look like they're very easy to get off with this team. You're also able to deal with Tapu Fini pretty effectively since uh, you're able to absorb whatever water move they want to go for with that uh, Gastrodon. And Gastrodon is very interesting in this team because... Like, you don't, you haven't seen it at all in the previous teams on this list, uh, but it's very scared of Kartana, so I guess Rotom Heat plus Gastron would be the way to run it, because it allows you to check the Kartana more easily, uh, where, what is it, Incineroar isn't as easily able to check it, while it does intimidate it, it's still scared of Max Knuckle or even Sacred Sword, so... I could see the I could see the Rotom getting a bit further when it comes to supporting the Gastrodon. Landris, uh, obviously a very solid check, one of the better Pokemon of the format, able to max Airstream and such as well as Cycle Intimidates. I'm assuming Special Dragapult. I'm not certain though, because it looks like it looks like this team would want to be Special Dragapult, or at least in the format, it favors Special Dragapult in my opinion. Uh, and finally, Tyranitar. I'm not sure what Tyranitar's purpose is here, because he already seems to have a couple of checks to many of the flying types in the format, or I guess maybe it's it's just for like things like Tornadus, Thunderous, etc. Because it does have one of the better matchups versus them, as long as you opt to Dynamax this thing and hit him with a Max Rockfall, because otherwise you won't be taking a superpower from either of them. Uh, but it's really just Thunderous that I suppose threatens it, since Tornadus is more, is more leaning towards running special attacks. Uh, also, I, I'm going to guess that the weakness policy is on that, that Tyranitar, since yeah, he doesn't have a Metagross, so yeah, uh, a very solid team. I, I like it a lot. Joe's like an expert team builder, and I really, I, I respect the heck out of that guy. He's so cool. But yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on all these teams. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I guess my, my final thoughts would be not nearly as much Landris as many people were expecting. A lot of really solid Trick Room options. It seems that Having a soft Trick Room mode in this format is very favorable, since you never know when you're going to have to run into one, so just having the option is very good. Galarian Moltres is absolute heat in the format, despite not having any fire moves, and Tapu Fini seems to be the best Pokemon overall. So yeah, uh, that's that's my thoughts, wrapping it up. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, leave a like if you liked, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, you're getting a second upload today. I'm going to be recording my, uh, my laddering sessions finally, so... Yeah, see you guys over there. Have a nice one. Bye.